Welcome to the latest episode of County Council. I am in Milwaukee with Andy Phillips, WCA General Counsel. Andy, great to see you. Awesome to see you. It has been since we've last gathered here, December of 2019. It seems like it was a week ago and a decade ago. At the Absolutely. Same time. I would say a lifetime ago. I'm going to go on a limb right there. So it's great to see you. So 14 months into this pandemic, you hate to say the word unprecedented, but it genuinely has been an unprecedented time for our counties. What has been the biggest takeaway for you in the last 14 months? Go back to when this whole thing started. Unprecedented. That's a great word. It's overused, but it has been unprecedented. I, I have to say that I'm incredibly proud to be part of the county family because I think that the way counties have reacted to the pandemic has been incredible. It's been awesome. And that's in no small part because of the dedicated people that we have working in county government day in and day out. Um, no offense to the other layers of government, but we've seen at the federal level, at the state level, we've seen dysfunction, disorganization, and those are not words that we would use to describe county government in this time of pandemic. Um, and so I think it's been an interesting journey. I think that counties have learned a lot over the course of the last 14 months, but I think that overall, uh, the counties have done a fantastic job at reacting to changing circumstances, and, and as we know, Things have changed on a daily basis with this pandemic, and counties have been there rising to the challenge each and every step of the way. Well, you know, Andy, we had talked about that. This is the first time we've seen each other in person in quite a while, but our county family sees you every Monday morning at 11 a.m. on our county leadership call. So you have been every step of the way alongside counties as we have navigated these very choppy waters. Can I come up with a few other analogies? It's good. I love metaphors. Metaphors are good. Good metaphor. So what has been... What has surprised you the most during this pandemic? Things like, you know, we've talked about in the past, different parts of statutes that you may not have in the past been overly familiar with. Yeah, I mean, looking back, if we were to say, rewind the clock two years and say, Andy, what do you know about Chapter 323 or Chapter 252? I would have said, give me a moment. Let me look at the statutes and I'll tell you what I know. Now I can almost cite chapter and verse from both of those chapters. And Chapter 323 is the chapter dealing with emergency government. And that's always been an important chapter in the books. Counties have emergency plans, and counties do a great job with their emergency planning. But typically, we see that used for tornadoes, yes. floods, things of that nature. So it's isolated. It's a particular county or a particular region of the state. Now, all of a sudden, we have a global pandemic, and we have counties that are forced to res uh, respond. And remember, these are, our citizens didn't stop needing these critical services that counties provide. So they had to provide these services. And so they had to figure out a way under Chapter 323 to provide those services on an emergency basis mm -hmm. without their typical command structure, their typical chain of command structure. So utilizing Chapter 323 and the mechanisms within those statutes, um, that's something that's, that was brand new for a lot of counties. And we saw early on questions and concerns about who's making what decisions and when and eventually we got through that and figured out a good way to deliver those services. By the same token, Chapter 252 of the statutes, the Communicable Disease Chapter, we saw a lot of litigation. From my standpoint, it was interesting because we saw cases go all the way to the Supreme Court talking about the authority of the state health officer, Secretary DHS, the authority of local health officers. Can a local health officer really come in and if this were six weeks ago, come in and say, Andy, Michelle, you're too close. I'm going to write you a ticket because you're not socially distant. Does a local health officer have that type of legal authority? We saw all of those issues uh, come up. And, and in fact, last summer, we created the task force to deal with those types of questions. Again, very proud of the work of the task force. Did a fantastic job analyzing those legal issues. And so I think over the course of the past 14 months, we've learned an awful lot. And I've learned an awful lot about topics that, frankly, I didn't know a heck of a lot about before. As we adapt here and go into sort of the next phase of this, this whole new normal, we keep hearing that as well, what advice would you have for counties right now where they are in the process, where we are with this pandemic when you bring in vaccines into, into the conversation and everything else? Well, the next three months are going to be very telling because I think that we've got to the point where um, almost everybody who wants a vaccination can get one. And I understand that there are pockets of the state that demand is still outpacing supply. I think I heard earlier this week um, that the supply is soon going to outpace demand. And so at some point, we're going to reach the point where everybody in Wisconsin wants to be vaccinated is vaccinated. But there's going to be a significant part of society that, for whatever reason, just doesn't want right. the vaccination. Yeah. 
we still have to deliver services. As counties, we still have to interact with the public. And so going forward, what type of rules, what type of procedures, what type of protocols are we going to have in place to make sure that we're delivering these services to the public in a safe and efficient manner? And so I think counties have to decide over the coming months exactly what they're going to look like in the coming months and years. And I don't think it's going to be the same that it looked like back in 2019 when we last got together. I think people have said rightfully so that society is fundamentally altered as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. I think county government and the way we deliver services is fundamentally altered. That might be good, might be bad. I think it depends on perspective, but it has changed. How do you look at this from, we've talked about this before as well, the business of our counties, the business of what's happening in the board, the way they operate their, their business in, from the board perspective. Isn't it funny, we get together every week on a Zoom call. Yeah. I mean, if you would have told me, and I mean, we talk about vocabulary, if you would have told me COVID-19, coronavirus, three years ago, I would have shook my head and said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. If you would have told me, hey, Annie, let's get together on a Zoom. If you would have said that to me in 2019, I would have said, I have no idea what you you're talking about. You had to install about. the app on your computer, right? We all did. No <laughs> idea what never it is. never done that. But now it becomes commonplace. We get together every week by Zoom. We have county board committees meeting by Zoom. We have county boards allowing remote attendance in county board meetings by Zoom or by WebEx or some other technology that allows video attendance. So is that going to be a permanent feature of governance? Are county boards and county board committees going to allow that type of attendance by board members? And for that matter, as it relates to the general public, are they going to be able to monitor proceedings by video? If we have a public hearing component, component or a public comment component at a meeting, is the public going to be allowed to participate by remote attendance? These are all questions, and I've said this for the past 10 years, time to dust off your county board rules and take a look at how it is that you want to govern. What are the rules of the game? Well, now it becomes very urgent. I mean, how are we going to have a governing structure that allows transparency, that allows the public to participate? Are we going to allow remote attendance? Those are all great questions, and no one county is going to look at it the same as another county. So make those decisions and figure out exactly how it is that we are going to get together as a governing entity. And, you know, the interest we've seen from the association's perspective in educational outreach on these topics has been, I think, the biggest number we had was over 300 people at one of your webinars about, yeah, people, this is a topic they're talking about, this paradigm shift, another another metaphor I'm going to throw paradigm out, Paradigm shift, I think, paradigm that, came shift, from, unprecedented. I think that came from the 80s, actually. That was like <laughs> IBM's catchphrase. Absolutely. But there is, the conversation is being had statewide, and as we continue to evolve, the con this conversation will obviously continue, and we're grateful to have you at the helm of those conversations. Well, thank you, and I appreciate it. Like I said, I've never been prouder of my affiliation with county government and everything that we do for counties. It's, I really enjoy it, and hopefully that comes through on our Monday calls. Absolutely, and it's, it does. It's fun working with you, working with WCA, and obviously all the member counties. Well, you've been a tremendous resource, and I think from day one, you have been on Zoom, working with us directly for counties to basically guide the way. So we're so appreciative to have you. Awesome, thanks. So can you talk just a little bit, Andy, about if you had one piece of advice right now to give counties going forward the next three months, six months, 12 months, what is that one thing from your big basket of advice? You gotta just pick one little thing out. What is that? Mine, and, and I'm big on process, as everybody I think knows. Uh, the one word that stands out to me is deliberate. Be deliberate. And so think about what it is that you're doing. We have time. Everybody thinks that we are in an emergent circumstance, that we have a pandemic, we gotta deal with it, I gotta make a decision in the next 10 minutes. No, not necessarily. You might have to do something to deal with a particular issue in the next 10 minutes, but you don't have to make final decisions in the next 10 minutes. So be deliberate about what it is that you're doing. Figure out the appropriate structure for your particular organization, for your board, for your administration. Work with stakeholders and be deliberate in the decision-making process because one thing that we've done really well as counties is come together and have a discussion about that appropriate foundation of knowledge. And then we work off of that foundation of knowledge to make decisions. Nobody makes the same decision. 72 counties all do things differently. And that's awesome. That's great. But all 72 counties should be working from that very foundation of knowledge to make a decision and do it in a deliberate way. Because if you do it that way, the, the public's going to have more faith in your decisions. Um, you're going to get more buy-in from your employees, from administration, from the board. And so just be deliberate in your decision-making process. 
Well, Andy, as always, great advice, great direction. It's a pleasure to work with you. Uh, we look forward to the months and years ahead of a continuing relationship, and we appreciate all that you do and all your colleagues here at Von Briesen. So thank you for your time today. Awesome. Thanks, Michelle. Good to see you. You too.